This is Twit. Um, tonight we're going to talk about lighting up your ham shack or your portable shack or your grab and go station. I originally started out with this. It's 600 volt. It's called electroluminescence. And electroluminescence, called EL, is amazing stuff. It does require high voltage. Uh, you can uh, even sequence it so it does uh, dots and dashes or whatever. But EL did not like the wet weather out here in Southern California. So then I was attracted to uh, 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 fluorescence, and we've got a vacuum fluorescent tube back there on the sign that goes up and down. It doesn't like wet weather. And then about 10 years ago at the Consumer Electronics Show, Bob, I saw the great display of LEDs on a strip. So that's what we're going to talk about tonight is light emitting diodes and a trick to make them work when you stick them on your outside vehicle, if that's what you're going to light up. Or as I have here on the ham station, LEDs looking down. So let's go to that first shot, Victor. And LEDs on a strip have been around for about 10 years. And it was at the Consumer Electronics Show that we immediately saw, well, they were nice, but they were cold. Well, after a couple of years, they began to change the uh, chemistry of the light-emitting diode. That's a diode uh, in the forward direction that, uh, when energized, it lights a, a, a diode. And we came out with not only cold LEDs, but warm LEDs, LEDs on a strip. So this was pretty neat. And there was big price disparities between some of the vendors. Some had them for like uh, 12 to $15 direct from overseas. Others had them at 20 to 22. And I finally met up with Roger and Kim. Now they're the husband and wife team that travel all over the country at all the ham fest. And they're with Wiredcom. And they say, let me tell you all the different varieties of the LEDs. And there's not one LED right for every application. Well, this is great. So the 20 to $25 LEDs come in either cool or warm or extra warm, but you can't tell just by looking at the strip turned off. So Roger makes it a point that before he markets any LED, he always asks, what are you trying to light up? Do you want ambience or do you want like a cold uh, cathode light? Well, we can see that Roger is there on the phone again talking to someone. And again, he interrogates him. No, I won't sell you a strip until you tell me how you want to use it. And that's Kim in the background getting ready for another ham show. And Roger and Kim, they are characters at ham shows. As you know, they've got the audio system going with a turntable. They're good people. Some LEDs emit straight out. Yet other ones in the flat mode, the top ones actually emit either up or down. Now, what does that mean? Well, that means that if you want to illuminate uh, the entire room, you would go for the bottom strip that runs the LEDs lighting up out. But if you want to illuminate, let's say, uh, a certain area uh, below the LED strip, then you go for these LEDs. And they're pretty darn good in that they illuminate with a downward uh, uh, view but uh, they're a little bright straight on. So take a little bit of nail polish and um, uh, just uh, tap them on the top part. And uh, then at your uh, station, you won't be having those LEDs staring you right in the face. Uh, here's my uh, portable grab and go kit. This is one we're going to use out at uh, Courtside, Arizona in two weekends from now. And everybody will be amazed that it's a nice uh, warm LED strip, but it only emits light going almost straight down on the equipment. So you need to be sure and tell Roger that. Now I've got some real LED sources overseas and I did find out one thing and that is after a while, uh, some of them will begin to, I don't think they burn out, but I'll, I'll lose eight or 10 in a row. So I encourage you, well, it's tempting to get them on eBay and some of the other places. You never know what's gonna happen and as you can see on this one in the center, under the words ham radio, it's nice and warm. And off to the sides, it's a different shade. So 
Go with professionals that really will market you the kind of LEDs you want. There it is at night illuminating the uh, mixer. So these LEDs are pointed down and they work just great. Radio set up on the left by my Coast Guard Auxiliary team members. Uh, good LEDs pointing at the equipment. On the right, blinding. They're right in your face. So uh, they have since, I think, uh, switched over to LEDs that point down. And that makes a big difference. Now, you don't need necessarily 16 feet of LEDs. Maybe you only need 8 or 10 feet. Most of the professional LED strips, which you can get at uh, sales at wiredco.com. That's Roger and Kim's Wired Communications uh, email address for info. You can cut them, and then very carefully you can solder to the plus and minus and get them to work as individuals. But again, here at my shack, I got some overseas at a bargain rate. I think it was like under 10 bucks for 16 feet. And within about a year, they began to poop out. So I always recommend buy locally because Roger only gets the very best that won't do that. That one did. Well, the communications van originally had the electroluminescence, but moisture got to them. They pooped out. So I wanted a new, good, waterproof LED strip. I mean, one that you could actually submerge underwater. <clears throat> Not that we're going to do that with a van, but you never know. But the very first one I got, take a look. Yep, see the bare spots right above the communications unit sign? Yep, those I didn't get direct from Roger. I got them overseas for like 12 bucks for waterproof. And uh, they continuously had sections that just would uh, poop out. So you want to watch out for cheap LEDs. Well, then I began to say, well, uh, are they only just white or blue? Well, you can get them in different colors as well. Looks a little schmaltzy on a professional vehicle to have reds and greens and yellows. But as you can see, <clears throat> one, two, three, four, plus one, two, three, four connection spots on the left and to the right. This is one that you can drive to different colors. And schmaltzy, yeah, with a controller, they, they do a good job. You also want to, if you're going to mount your LEDs on a boat or a snowmobile, for those of you uh, tonight on the East Coast and Midwest and <laughs> almost the entire country, uh, you want something that's not going to turn sort of a yellow, dull color with the sun during the summertime. And that's what happened on the bottom strip. Again, a Gordo bargain overseas LED strip. Whereas Rogers on the top, wow, that one stayed nice and shiny white. The uh, plastic covering did not discolor. So on this latest one, not from Roger, but from uh, an overseas supplier, we said, well, this is pretty nice, a 3M backing so I can just stick it on. Wow, this is going to be real easy to mount. So what do you do? Well, once you're ready to stick it on, you just peel that back and you just peel it back. And, oh, now what the heck's going on here? The sticky part is sticking to the part that you're trying to unpeel. You want it to stick to that white part, not to itself. Well, not a problem. You can take out a um, uh, fine uh, uh, operating tool and a little pair of tweezers and uh, coax the sticky stuff off uh, the left side that you see there. And oh, then it becomes a mess. And there's absolutely nothing sticky that the LED strip is going to hang on on the right side. Well, with enough patience and uh, your wife, as Susie was helping me, uh, helping, uh, we're able to get uh, the top finally. Uh, peeled away from the other part. There's the uh, tweezers doing the final bit. And once you finally get it on itself, you want to stick the sticky part, which is double-sided, to a point that it's not going to peel off. And then slowly, carefully begin to peel off that. What they say is 3M. I'm a little doubtful about that. Uh, 3M would not have it stick to itself. And now you've got sticky stuff to keep the LED on. We add a little bit of super glue just to make sure it's on. So for those of you thinking of an LED strip for your communications unit or your snowmobile or however you plan to do it, um, take a look at Wired Communications website, sales at wiredco.com. Roger and Kim will ask you a bunch of questions as to how you plan to use the LED 
Uh, maybe you're going to mount them on uh, your uh, quadcopters, as uh, Neil W6FOG does every year at Quartzsite, Arizona. In two more weeks from now, <coughs> you'll get those babies going. The LEDs draw very little current. And there's Kimmers, ready to help you out getting the right LED strip for you. So I encourage all of you to have a great um, uh, uh, upcoming few days. All of us here on the West Coast are thinking about you folks on the uh, East Coast and uh, we'll uh, be dressed accordingly. And uh, I'll see you next week and then I'll be gone for a couple of weeks while we do Quartzsite, Arizona, the ARRL special event, Ham Fest in Quartzsite, Arizona. <laughs>